Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to talk about if you should let your car cool down after you're done driving it since it's turbocharged. And I'm gonna touch a little bit more about that first video I did talking about warming up your engine. All right, so what I decided to do for the first part, you know, I've been driving the car pretty aggressively and uh, I'm coming back home and this is what I do. I just drive and I just chill out for the last couple of miles of driving. I just kind of chill out for a little bit. And what this does is it allows things to cool. I am getting, bringing airflow to the engine, to all the, all the components to allow everything to cool. Now, by the time I arrive, which should be another couple minutes, it should be well enough cool enough for me to just turn it off. There's no need to wait. And you can see here, I'm cruising along back here at 50 miles an hour and I am at 1,000 RPM, which is barely above the idle speed. Now, I'm gonna go in more detail about this. I'm gonna go in more detail about also the warm-up procedure because people have questions about that. So let's cut to those now. Let's do the uh, warm-up procedure and I'll show you what I did for that. I measured the temperatures real time so you guys can see the difference of me idling the car for a few minutes versus me driving it. Keep watching. All right guys, you questioned about warm up time. So I'm gonna do my Beamer Link app. We're gonna do a cold start and we're gonna see the difference between letting the car idle up the temperature and the time that it takes to actually warm up. All right, now I know it's summertime. I drove the car yesterday. This car's been sitting for um, at least, you know, you know over overnight. So let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna do a screen recording, Beamer Link app, and I'm going to go ahead and open my dashboard. We're gonna look at all the gauges, real time. All right, as you can see, coolant temperature is 91 degrees my transmission temperature is 86 degrees oil sump temperature is if that's even right it is 32 degrees which is, seems really not accurate right now all right so let's go ahead and turn the car on i'm going to get into it and we're going to go ahead and uh drive so we're going to i'm going to screen record this here we go Oil sump temperature updated to 84 degrees. Oil temperature is 88 degrees. Coolant temperature is 95, 105, and everything's coming to temperature. All right, this is the time I put it in gear. So, me just back on my driveway. See guys, the car is still warming up. So letting the car sit, I just think that is doesn't really help. I mean, it's that you know you're kind of wasting your time and your fuel at this point. What's the garage? Pull on gently. I'm not, you know, racing the car right away. I'm just pulling to the first stop sign. You know, going through a neighborhood. Now I, I live not towards the end of the neighborhood, so that way I don't have much time to travel. But even then, I'm at the first stop sign, the oil temperature it is 106 and climbing, which is adequate for now, you know, driving. Uh, the oil sump is 86. Transmission temperature is still cool at 87 degrees. All right, so coolant temperature is 141. Go to the next stop sign. Okay. And would you guys take note of the current time? It's been two minutes. 
almost three minutes. Going to the first traffic light. video I did a cold start and I showed you guys about the time where you can start putting the sport mode and push it and this is the time now you can start to slowly kind of you know drive the car more more aggressively and I, I still stand by that I'm not retracting any statements here and I'm showing you guys right now my oil temperature is 181 which is now a good range and the transmission temperature is 104 you guys can do what you want in your car. I know that some people say, well, I, I just prefer to wait. You can wait. But if you, if you think by waiting for 5, 10, 15 minutes in the driveway, it's going to help your car before you get out there and start driving it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't change anything. But just for just for laughs, I'm going to do a warm up like this tomorrow morning. I'm gonna let the car idle for three minutes driving since someone said that they um, they recommended that. And so let's say three minutes and then I'll drive it. I'm gonna show you the difference in the temperature that is doesn't make any difference whatsoever. All right guys, let's do it. Cold start, you can see here, my temperatures are 90 degrees. This time I'm going to let the car idle to temperature. We'll see how long it takes. Um, transmission temperature is 87. We'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get the thing started. 90, 90, 90, everything's 90 degrees. And here we go. Got screen recording on. All right, you can see here, it's been three minutes. Um, oil temperature is 118. The cool, the temperature is 93. I still stand by what I said. Waiting this three minutes doesn't make any difference. I've gained 
for transmission temperature, I gained what was 89, mode three to four degrees. The transmission temperature, let's talk a little bit more outside the car, more light. All right, regarding the temperatures, coolant temperature, not so important. I mean, that's really not relevant unless the car is overheating, you know, where you probably need to you know, monitor that. The more important is the oil, the engine oil temperature. I mean, if you notice the turbocharged BWs don't even include the coolant temperature um, as a gauge. You only see the oil temperature because it's more vital to operating temperature. When you're looking at the transmission temperature, um, and I'm gonna play the screen recording here, I let the X5 sit, it was a bit colder, and I let it sit outside um for about 10 minutes and i i believe before i started driving the temperature was still in the 80s now if i had started driving that temperature would have started to slowly rise and probably by the time i got to my you know three minutes later i would have been you know a lot closer to operated temperature than just linen idle and the reason that is because the transmission needs to move it needs to move in order to circulate the fluid and also get the moving parts warming up, right? Um, because the engine is moving, so that, that's how that's warming up. But that, that's, I, I mean, I, I see what the points, you guys are making the points, but I guess this is where I stand, this is how I feel. You can take what you want from this video and decide from there. All right, let's move on to the next part with the cool down, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. So is cool down necessary? Now people will argue and they'll say yes. And I think to a certain extent, yes. However, with the technology now, things have changed from where it used to be, is you don't need to do that anymore. All right, that stuff is kind of older. If you think back in the 90s, you know, I used to have a 3000 GT VR4. It was twin turbo V6, all wheel drive. It was a very fast car. Eventually I upgraded the turbos, did some stuff to it. but. The way that we had to protect our turbos, because, like I said, that bearing is cooled by oil. And that oil, that oil supply, by having those feed lines go into the oil and return lines, your engine oil is circulated through that turbine. It is as lubricant and is extracting the heat, right? So that, that's what it's doing. When we run the car hard, you turn the engine off, you have cut out the oil supply. You have starved that turbocharger of oil. So that heat that that turbocharger has generated, and they said the operating temperature is you know, 12 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that that heat is just building up, it's building up inside of the engine. And there's nothing in, there's nothing to circulate that oil. There's nothing to, to extract that heat. And what was happening is when you starve the engine of oil, that heat, that, that oil is now is heating up and it's causing the oxidation and things and it really degrades the oil and it hurts the bearings and you cause these like the oxidation the particles it just it just really just ruins the turbocharger it ruins the engine as far as the oil quality so what we did was on our three you know on those cars back then we would have to park let it idle and we, you know we would give it like three to five minutes of cool down time if we ran the engine hard to let everything kind of settle down, okay? Also too, there were aftermarket things we would buy. I had an aftermarket thing called a turbo timer where you can usually set a preset time to allow um, the engine to cool after you've took the key out and locked the car. So with, that way you didn't waste any time. I could pull into you know, a grocery store, take the key out, lock the door, walk away, the engine will idle. And then after my preset time, the engine turns off. And some of the smarter turbo timers, that, like the one I had, had an automatic setting. So it read the real-time boost pressure. And then it could adjust the amount of idle time needed based on the amount of boost and the amount of time that hasn't seen boost and adjust it accordingly. So it can go up and down depending on. So if you just got the highway and you ran a car hard, it's going to be maybe 10 minutes. If you were just cruising along, it's going to be like a minute. And th that, was, that was how you made our day's life easier. Um, obviously, those were extra costs and had to be wired into the car and things like that. 
But let's talk more about modern cars and how things are proven and, and it's not really necessary now. This is the reason why. Remember I talked about how the oil and the turbo helps kind of extract some of the heat and like I said, it you know, runs into bearings and things. Um, and I'm not sure about, I can't speak on every car, but I can speak on confidently about BMW. There's some engine coolant that runs through the turbocharger. So it gets circulated past the turbocharger and it helps extract that heat. So they benefit a lot more. Clean. I'm sure the manufacturers are doing the same thing. The engineers thought ahead. They said, okay, let's do this. We turn the engine off. We'll continue to circulate. We continue to run the water pump and circulate that water throughout the turbocharger to extract the heat for that set amount of time. And that's that my time to range because remember I talked about the turbo timers back in the 90s that those devices you had to buy at the market. The car almost has a built-in timer in the way. Also too, with the modern oils that we have, the oils have improved a lot since the 90s. We have very you know long lasting oils and the, the additives and the detergents that are in them now can also help combat that. And if you ever notice, I, you can hear it. You can hear the coolant, the water pump still flowing. And what they're doing is, is actually cooling off. Um, so that, that is kind of unnecessary. Now I'm not saying that I'm on track day, as soon as I exit off the track, I'm turning the engine off because on a track you are putting a car through a, uh, higher temps than you will see on the street. It is extremely high. So I think on the track, exiting off the track, you really need to give that car a few minutes. And what I usually do is I exit off and I will drive one pass up and down the um, the pit area and that gives everything time and it not only just the engine the turbochargers it gives the brakes and everything else which has a whole nother topic on its own but that's because you're bringing everything up the temp all right I mean the, uh, beyond um, where it is normally operating on the street if I were to get X off the highway you know and by the time I make it to my house that is more than enough time for the engine to cool off. If I were to punch it right before I got to my, my road, um, by the time I drive to my neighborhood and you know turn off, pull my driveway, get in there, park, turn the engine off, that's already two minutes that the car has had time to idle down, okay? Now, what can help? This is an extra step, and then I do this too. You can open the engine hood and kind of help because that lets some of that heat out instead of it keeping it trapped inside that compartment. That's I think, something that can do and that what that can help to of getting that heat, letting that heat escape. So it's not so much of letting it idle, but I think if it's just opening the hood, letting it escape, that's just an extra step I do if I know that I have ran that engine hard. So, you know, if you guys see me do those launch control um, things or those either 60, draggy recordings I tend to come back home and I know that I ran the car hard I will bring it back in um, and I usually before I even arrive at the house that last couple miles of driving is going to be very gentle driving that is more than enough time to get that engine down to temperature and I take the extra step going beyond of just opening the hood letting it escape and guys if you have the N63 or S63 TU engine, you can just pull off that little cover over the turbochargers and then you just let all that heat out. And it's amazing how much heat comes from that. Just be careful, don't bring yourself. So do that on your own risk. That is, you can do that in extreme cases. But normally, day to day driving, um, EM5 just got on the highway a few times, and by the time I get home, more than enough. All right, guys, if you have found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up, you know, like it, share it, and it helps me, helps the channel. But Guys, take care. And I don't mean to say like anybody else is doing something wrong. There's a lot of misinformation going around and I wanna make sure everyone is well prepared. Now, it's your own car. If you wanna idle for 10 minutes before you drive the car, if it makes you feel better, go ahead. Um, is it really doing much harm? I mean, it, it's not good to excessively idle the engine. 
Um, it's not good for the valve stem seals, not good for a lot of those things, just for excessive idling. But you know, if you let it sit there for a couple minutes, it's not gonna do any harm. Um, the modern oils right now can, can really um, protect the engine. It's usually those first 30 seconds are critical. Um, I think getting in a car, you know, putting a load on it, like I said, backing out and driving it is beneficial, more beneficial than just sitting it. Um, I don't engine before you turn it off. Like I said, my, my thoughts, I give you my thoughts. If you feel like you want to do it, you can still do it. I'm not going to say like you're don't, don't waste your time, but it is sort of a waste in today's technology. But thank you guys. Find the video helpful. Like, share it. Thank you for watching.